Oh, hey, there you are. How you doing? Yeah, so this is another midnight snack run. I've been uh, hanging out in the tent here. Uh, it's been a pretty good day. We started the day with a, a live stream with uh, my friends uh, Shinichi and uh, Satoshi uh, that are also self-isolating here in Tokyo. We've been at it now for one month. We started this 30 days ago. And it's crazy that we are still self-isolating like most of the world. Some people are in there in day 60. We're in day one, day 30. Um, it's a beautiful night. You can hear the wildlife all around me, including uh, our, our uh, friend down here. He's gonna be joining us because Kanai, Kanai is wanted to sleep properly in a bed. She has that option and I'm not going to argue with her. However, this is a time of the absurd. So just bear with me, okay? Because this is Midnight Snack Run Camping Edition. All right, let's get out of this tent. It's nice to have a, a roaring campfire on the other side. Oh, it's, it's really nice. It's a beautiful campfire. You know, it hasn't changed in a month. It's just been nonstop burning. It's pretty cool. Who gets the wood? I don't get the wood. Just magically appears like that. All right. Whew. The great outdoors. All right, let's get in the kitchen. Let's get something from old Frosty. It's actually new Frosty, really. So you can see what time is it here. It's uh, 1, 12.55. Now in the great outdoors, you don't typically have a kitchen. But uh, today we do. Actually, I don't, I could just use this light. I don't actually need these lights. So we should be doing it by camp, by uh, camp light. Yeah. All right, what do we have here? Look at this. This just happens to be a Wagyu and garlic potato chips. All right, we're gonna give these a try today. Um, potato chips are uniquely flavored. They're Japanese flavored. This says Wagyu, so it's gotta be Wagyu, but can you taste the difference really between any other beef? And are beef flavored potato chips any good? Well, we're gonna figure that out. Usually it's like, you know, nacho cheese or something. I don't know. Um, these look pretty interesting. I wonder who left these out here. Must have been, must have been Kanai or something. This is um, Ume Nori Maki. That's an Umeboshi, which is an extremely sour plum, a Japanese sour plum with Japanese seaweed rolled in these rice kind of crackers. It's a delightful snack that we're going to have in this midnight snack run. Ex expiration date. Oh, this would be good enough to send by sea to our American Daimyo supporters. Oh, we got mozzarella. Can you eat mozzarella balls like this? Can you just eat them as is? Expiration date. Oh, we gotta eat that soon, next week. All right, what do we got in here? Oh, I like what I see here. This is a premium malts brewed in Tokyo, Japanese ale. This is only in Japan, it has to be. All right, this is gonna do just nicely. We haven't had a premium malt in a while. Mr. Das, he does prefer the taste of an Asahi, but, well, 2021 Olympic beer partner. Let's keep that to ourselves. Um, I, we have a butter shortage. He's off permanently. I just cannot stand this penguin. Yeah. Um, we have a butter shortage in, to in Japan, so I had to get this New Zealand butter. It's traditionally churned with cream. It's one kilogram of butter. Do you know how much this cost me? $30 for a kilogram of New Zealand butter. And it was the only butter I could buy. It's insane, but no butter, no life. Somebody said that. Somebody great, better than me, smarter than me. All right, a package of bizarre mushrooms. Namiko. Would you eat this? I don't know, let's keep that in there. Shitake. These are raw though, I can't eat that. This is natto. It looks fun, doesn't it? But it's really sticky, fermented soybeans. 
You're gonna look like that if you eat it. Let's leave it, leave it in there. Oh, and this is shirashi. Shirasu. These are little teeny fish. You can, if you look closely, you can see their eyes. You see them? You can see their eyes. You see the black spots there. All right, we're gonna skip that. But what I do see here looks pretty good. This here is a kope pan yakisoba. Who doesn't like yakisoba? So we're gonna have a yakisoba. I did disinfect this because I got it from the got it from the convenience store. That's why it's still wet. All right, we're gonna put it here. We got three things. That's pretty good for the midnight snack run. What else do we got in here? What is this? What? I don't remember getting this. I don't know what this is. This is a a Drymon egg. What? Choco egg. All right, this is a special present. It's left here. I don't know what, what things just magically appear inside this box. I I, can't, I don't know. We're gonna open this up now and check out this chocolate egg. That can be our dessert. That should be good enough. All right, let's get back in. We're gonna need this. By the way, this is, let me turn this on low. There we go. This is, um, this is Mike Chen's favorite Japanese curry. And Mike, if you're watching, probably not. Um, they do have it in available in a package. This is Bondi curry, Bondi cheese curry. And uh, we get this at the supermarket, like a case of it, so we can eat this with rice anytime we want. Bondi curry is so good. That cheesy, luxurious, luxurious cheesy taste with the Japanese curry is such such a delight. All right, let's take our haul over into the by the campfire. Let's keep it down, okay, because Kanai is sleeping. You guys with me? Good, 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 good. It's, it's a pretty big haul here. Wow, did I get all that? I don't think I can eat all of that. Oh wait, where's my table? Oh no. Stay right here. I'm gonna go and get my table. I have a little teeny camping table. I forgot about it. Just just watch over the campfire. If anything moves, report it or something. I don't know. Just stay safe. this I got this for these midnight snack runs all right so we're gonna set this table up together um, oh, I have a nice seat here by the campfire it's warm up a little bit it's actually pretty warm out inside here so we don't actually need this campfire so let's let's put this table together and I'm gonna put this on top of the table and we can do have a midnight snack just keep it down, all right? Because Kanai is a, she's asleep in there. Hey, Mr. Das is here. When Mr. Das sees beer, the super chats are coming in really quickly. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Das, I appreciate it. This is the top of the table. Hello from Bend, Oregon. Hey, this is Bradshaw Studio. Hey, how you doing? Long time no see. Oh, this is cool. And this, this fits in here. Oh, this is pretty cool. It's very light. All right, so we got this, and now we're gonna put the tabletop on.
perfect. Okay. All right, this is pretty toasty in here. Um, I got this table because it's better to have a raised position or else it, it's, it's an angle that nobody wants to see. There's a man spread, no, just let's keep it, let's just keep it, you on the table, it's better that way. All right, let's take a look here. Um, oh, that's nice. How you doing, everybody? Ah, uh, so, like, it, it's been a pretty tough month, I think. And we started off about three and a half weeks ago with an indoor camping, and I thought I would just continue with this theme. Um, I'm gonna be doing, you know, self-isolation for a while now, and it looks like that the tent might have to stay stay around for a while. You can see here, uh, it's there's the sofa back there. Just I, I made sure that this time it was really nice on the carpet, so it's it's pretty it's pretty nice sleep. Get the sleeping bag out later. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy. Uh, all of you are staying home as just like me, staying safe. That's the most important thing that you can do. Um, so these live streams. It's in low light, so you'll have to excuse the grain. There's not a lot of s that, that I can do to make the stream better. I have to get a new iPhone, and they're not coming out until until uh, uh, fall. By the way, Sony announced the new cameras, the cinema cameras. The entire world is extremely disappointed at, at the lazy PowerPoint presentation that Sony did to announce cameras. It was one of the, mo the worst camera announcement I've ever seen in the history. The entire world's disappointed at Sony. Come on, Sony, you gotta step up your game. Just thought I'd put that out there because that announcement came about two hours ago. All right. It's creamy. It smells like beer. All right, I, we're gonna save this as the main course. <laughs> I don't know why. That looks like that'll be a pretty good snack. Draymond, you're going to the side here. Oliver Stone writes in here, hey John, love all the videos in crisis. Things are gonna get even more crisis-y because we have some garlic potato chips here. More for Kanai later on than me. Right. Survival. If you don't have the sound of nature around you, how can you say you're a survivor, all right? Look, we might be stuck in areas. That doesn't mean we have to live like we are. Man up. Ugh. That's why I wear the flannel. The, the bad part is that I shaved recently and it, it totally kills that. There you go. It's a little bit better, huh? Slightly better. All right, let's give this a try. Wagyu and garlic. It's brand new from Calbee. Expiration date. Good enough to send by sea to our Daimyo supporters. I don't know if I'm gonna send this one, I'm just saying that. Alice has been summoned. Maybe. We'll see what's inside. It depends. Um, all right. I, I did a faux pas, which is French for something bad. I'm not even sure what faux pas means. Just people say it in this kind of a situation. Um, I opened this. Hey, wait, 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 okay, okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You there? Did you get hurt? The gimbal, the gimbal, when you put that lens on, needs to. I, the gimbal needs uh, to be balanced properly. I wasn't doing that. Sorry. You okay? Did that hurt? No. Okay. All right, the faux pas, yeah? The Japanese at parties, they open the bag here on the back. You open it up like this, and it opens up wider so you don't have to stick your hands deep into the bag because the bag is not deep here, right? So you don't have to go deep into the bag to, to fish them out if you open them up here from the middle of the back. Japanese tip. Everybody does this at parties. 
but not me. I did it American style. Serving bowl? Where do you think we are? In an apartment or something? All right, these smell like, um, I don't know if you've ever been to a uh, yakiniku restaurant, but they have something called tare. Tare is a, uh, a dipping sauce. This smells like the dipping sauce with garlic. I don't know if it's gonna taste like meat, but we're gonna, we're gonna f find out. All I know is that it's a little toasty from being in the fire for a couple of seconds. We don't wanna burn it. Here we go. You can't eat just one. I'm gonna have to try a couple more of these. All right, to clear the palate, pa the palate, I need to have a Tokyo brewed Japanese ale. Mmm, kanpai. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Typically, Japanese, um, this is not a craft beer, but Japanese will have, uh, they'll try their hand at it and it's awful. But this one is pretty good. It's got just a very slight bitterness to it. So I guess when you say Japanese, I guess you think subtle in flavor, subtle. It's a subtle bitterness. It's not in an, like, an, like an IPA, but somewhere between it, which could confuse you if you're a connoisseur of, of craft beer. Don't even try it. But for me, it's, it's good enough. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a big one here. Does, apparently we have a lot of people who are very, um, being in, inside, you, you kind of are very critical of the potato chips you eat now. So let's take a closer look at it. Get the peltzer out. Let's turn the camera around. Let's see here. What do you think of this potato chip? It's got pretty good salt coverage. You can see it glistening in the in the Peltzer light. The ridges are not too thick. Might be a little bit too bright there. We got it up, turned up to 450 lumens here. All right, let, let me get it down to, I can turn down the lumens here. There we go. All right. Not, not a lot of chemical pepper on there. That's good. That's very good. Kanaisen, Kanaisen a real bed. You know, I, I tried to convince her. She's very hard to convince to, oh, you guys are unbalanced. There you go. She's very hard to convince to get into the spirit of camping, which means we have to go real camping, which means I'm either that or I'm gonna have to install uh, an, another OLED on the ceiling so that we can have realistic stars on the, on the ceiling or get one of those planetarium things that projects them up there. That's the only way that I, I think I could lure her out with stars, but that's gonna take more work. This is still lame. I, ha I have to do more work for the camping. Um, I couldn't find on Amazon plastic bushes. I might just have to grow my own and I think we're gonna be locked in long enough for me to do just that. So, this is not a complete disappointment. This is pretty good, but. Mm. Let's put that to the side. Next up. Ume Norimaki. This is hardcore. Who, who, who here has ever had the Japanese sour plum? Has anybody had uh, umeboshi before? There's two kinds, all right? There's the kind of umeboshi that is so, that's so sour that when you put it in your mouth, it's either you love it or you hate it. And like, if it's your first time, you're probably gonna hate it. And you, you do this face like this. It's, it's hideous. And the, the funny thing is, I shouldn't say that. I should say it's not hideous. I guess it could be cute like this. It's not, it's hideous on a 40 year old man. But on an, on an 80 year old woman, who is probably the one who made the sour plums and loves the taste of it, 
that's that's the same face. It's 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 really adorable on, on an 80 year old woman. Um, but they're very sour and it's very hard to eat. Um, but I think that this has just the essence of an umeboshi. It's ume. And not umeboshi are created equal. Some are extremely sour, like, oh, what, why, why? And then there's some that are uh, sweeter. They, they have um, like a natural sweetness still in it. It just depends how, how far back the person who made that goes. Like if they go back to the Taisho era, which is before World War II, then those, those umeboshi are probably gonna be pretty sour because they love, they love to feel their food. Like it's like hardcore. Uh, and I'm talking about like Nijima, the Tokyo Island. You can go there by jet foil. Famous for a food called uh, kusai, uh, kusaya. Yeah, it's it's famous for a food called kusaya. Kusai means stink, all right? Kusai, kusai. It smells awful. Kusaya is is a like a dried fish, and it it smells so bad. It is one of the top five foods that makes you like. You smell it and you want to just hurl, all right? But you can grow, I've heard from people that, <laughs> who else would I have heard it from? I heard from people that it's that you can get used to it and develop a kind of tolerance to the smell where they actually enjoy it. The, the old timers really enjoy it. Now, I tried this on an episode of Tokyo Eye on an NHK report back in 2010 with my friend Jennifer Julian. We went out in this report, it was ridiculous, in Shinbashi. We went deep Shinbashi, like in, a, in, a, in, in an alley, and it was famous for serving kusaya. So I'd never had it before. So the dude brings it out and all of a sudden I could smell it. It smelled like a restroom, it's awful. Not without the urinal mints. And he grilled it a little bit to get give some heat. Heat is not one thing you want to do, people, with food that smells this bad. And then you're supposed to, to pick up the kusaya and eat it and, and drink it with beer and enjoy it and laugh with your friends. Ha, 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 like everything is just fine. I've never seen young people eat it. I'll just put it, I'll just put it out there. I've never seen anybody under 30 chowing down on kusaya. It takes a special man to eat a kusaya. Campfire man. I don't have any. All right, here's the, here's the kicker, right? I ate it, it was, it was awful, but I ate it. I took it down, because it was being filmed by a TV show. What are you gonna do, like spit it out? You can't do that, that's awful. So what, what freaked me out the most was not the taste. For four days, four days, I could not get the smell of it off my fingers. Four days. I was using, I was using all the soaps that I could find in the entire country of Japan. We don't got lava here, okay? There's no lava. So I, you can't get that stuff off. Literally, it, I only touched it for like five seconds and whatever that oil is or whatever is in that kusaya, it soaks into the skin deep where you can't get it out. And I don't know if the smell went away or I just got used to it, but I lived with, with really awful kusaya fingers for four days and it was a very tough year. All right, let's try these. All right, these are norimaki. These are pretty basic looking. See here. They're basically rice crackers. Hold on, let me get the light on here. Yeah, there we go. These are, oh, one, two, three, three second roll. It's still good. It's not like it's on carpet, right? We, we, can I wash these every day? I should be doing that too. Um... All right, norimaki is just seaweed wrapped around this little rice cracker. Sometimes they put peanuts in here. Oh, there's a little bit of salt on there. Okay. You'll, you'll see these everywhere. You'll see these everywhere. This light, man. This is like, uh, like 50 lumens. 250, 450 lumens in your face. Yeah. It's a good one. Let's try this norimaki. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. Super interesting. This is 
highly recommend that you try umeboshi. Even if you know you're gonna hate it, just try it. Because you'll never forget it. Now, th this umeboshi snack, it's not that sour. I mean, you don't wanna turn off your customer base. You wanna try to expand your customer base. But it has just the essence of it, but it is sour and it hits the side of the tongue on my right side. And there's also a, a slight sweetness to it that hits, hits another side of the tongue. And then there's some salt in it. And then there's that crunch. So it's a very, very good snack. I think this would be a good one to send to, send to people. Mmm. Mmm. Really good. Let's wash this down with some Tokyo Japanese ale. Ah, yeah. How are you doing there, Okapi? He's just chilling. I don't think that they actually lay down to sleep. This, an Okapi, that's a real animal, by the way. Not this not this particular one, but an okapi is like a zebra and a horse kind of mixed up in there. It's a real mix. They exist in the wild in Africa or at the Wayno Zoo. Beautiful. Oh, hey there. It's from uh, Beautiful Jay. Just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you keeping us entertained during the pandemic. You and Kanai be safe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Kanai is going to be super safe because she's not here in the wild. She probably has, she's probably a little bit smarter than I am. Probably. Well, definitely. All right, this is the, the almost the finale because we do have, we do have Doraemon here. Faye's life's here. It's going pretty good, Faye. How you doing? How you doing? All right. Light on you. Look at that yakisoba. All right, we have to we have to take her out of the package. Just stay right there. That sounds like the crackling of the fire. Urgh. It's pretty amazing how how the noodles stay in there. Oh, do you see that? There is a a second piece of plastic here that keeps the noodles down. Do you see that? That's very smart. It's ingenious. Oh, wow. Look at that. Noodle bread. Why would they do that, you know? Only in Japan do they take a no like a noodles and put it in bread. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, everybody, like J Japan, people here in Japan love to play with their food. And they even put some some ginger on top to add that little kick to it. All right, in my defense, come down here. In my defense with all those carbs, it's not like I ate all those potato chips. I had like four. And I've only had about three sips of beer. And I had only like for umeboshi norimaki. So it's not like I'm eating a bazillion carbs. Now, if I were to shove this in my face, that would be pretty bad. Like eat the whole thing in one bite, but I'm not gonna do that because that would just be wrong. And you can smell the yakisoba when you heat it up. The, the, uh, there's a saltiness to it and the sweet kind of a sweet sour of the of the ginger here it brings it up and it smells like basically cheap bread but you only get it only really starts to um the odors the the natural smells only come out after you heat it up a little bit just watch your hand because it gets pretty hot heat it up more <laughs> I get the light on. Hold on a second. There you go. 
looking like a bunch of cables. Like I'd taken a, taken a scissors or a knife and cut some cables. It's pretty cool. I don't know though, you know, I don't know if I'm ever gonna be a fan of this bread. I don't know if I'll ever be a fan of it because it doesn't make sense to me. Like literally, why? Look, okay, I, I, I get it, you know? I like noodles enough. I like noodles and I like bread, but when you put them together, it's like when you take spaghetti. I know you take the bread and you wipe up all the spaghetti sauce around it, but you don't make a spaghetti sandwich out of it, do you? Are there any kids out there? Anybody who lets you, makes a spaghetti sandwich, you get a piece of white bread, you put spaghetti in it and you make a sandwich. Does anybody do that? Pretty good. Cause it's 1 a.m. I'm only gonna eat half. You know, when this started about a month ago, I was a I was in a lot better shape. After this ends, memberships to gyms, all over and fitness centers are gonna just skyrocket, aren't they? They are, and it's gonna happen again. Everyone will get a gym membership and no one will go. It always happens. Ah. What a night, what a night. You guys have any plans this month? No, neither do I, not really. This actually, starting yesterday and today until about May 5th or 6th, is the Japanese Golden Week. This is the week where uh, Japanese typically will take a holiday and go back to their hometowns if they're living here in Tokyo. And travel is down 93%, meaning the Shinkansen were pretty much all empty, all right? But they were still going. Um, the highways, pretty much empty. If you compare last year to this year, People stayed home. I think it's working. I think we're gonna we're gonna be okay in, in in Tokyo. And the amount of infections, although testing is not the same as in other countries, it's pretty low. The curve, you can see it going down. It seems like we're going down. It seems. I. It's hard to say, but we're getting people are are, are hopeful. But you know what? I'm in this for the long haul. If they, ha if they make us stay indoors until September, I might be okay. But I'm gonna have to get like a treadmill or something. I don't know. I might be okay. All right, let's try this here. Well, how about you? Are you gonna be okay? No. Maybe if you have one of these, you will be okay. This is a Drymon chocolate egg. It cost me $2 at the local family mart. I usually go to the supermarket or the convenience store to get some, to resupply after midnight. Do you know wanna, you wanna know why? It's not just so I can do these midnight snack runs, no. I do it because there's nobody there and it's the safest time to go shopping. 24 hour supermarkets are doing amazing business right now. All right, let's give this a try here. Drymon, Drymon wants to, wants to join the party. Get the light on him. Did anybody see the Bruce Willis commercial for SoftBank where he he pretends like he's Drymon? See if you can <laughs> see if you can Google that and find the Bruce Willis commercial. It's hilarious. American uh, Hollywood actors, they don't do commercials in the US, but they do commercials in Japan. Oh. What do we got here? It's like a Kinder egg. We gotta open this up here. This is bigger, this is like a jumbo sized egg. 
Hey, Lenny's here. How you doing, Lenny? Thanks for being you. Thanks, Lenny. Uh-oh, Ellis right in here. Since we have a campfire, I think it's a good time for a story. Since you have many times in Japan have your neighbors come by and welcomed you. No, they haven't welcomed me. They know better. I've been talking to my neighbors across when we when we eat lunch on the balcony. I've been talking to them when they, they go to do their, their laundry. This looks like a, a typical egg. Oh, it's like, it, this one melts in your hands. How do you, Alice, how do you do this? Do you crack it? I don't want to get it on the table. Hold on. Chocolate. Ugh. Ah, it's all gross. It's all sticky now. Try a knife. Okay, I'll try a knife. The one that I was born with. We're all born with that knife. Oh! Check it out. There's like, it looks like a coconut. I'll save some of that chocolate for Kanai because I know she wants some of that in the morning. I'm only gonna eat a little bit of it because it's not good to eat chocolate before you go to bed. We have a mystery capsule inside of this. You were born with no teeth. That's actually true. <laughs> it's good. Well said. Well played. Well played by the live chat here. We were born with no teeth. Hey, Ellis, how do you open this? You and your... Okay, just pinch it. I was going to complain, but... Ugh. What? It's like indestructible. I got to cut my fingernails tomorrow. I've been waiting a week to do it to give me something to do on a... Ugh. Okay, all right. Pinching it here. What is this? What is this? I... Some kind of joke? Oh, there's a whole collection of them. Of course there is. There's uh, eight, 19 of them, or 20. The 20th one is a surprise, I guess, maybe. Interesting. What, which one did we get? We'll have to put it together and find out. Here are the directions. Oh, we got number 18. It's got some sort of pink thing. Alice, what is that? What's a pink thing? Alice doesn't need to authorize this. He knows I'm thinking of him. All right, let's try this here. Thankfully, this puzzle only has three steps. <laughs> you put it, you put his butt right here. I put it on backwards like the exorcist. I won't do that. Here you go. It's cute, huh? You've been a good boy. Tell me the secrets. 
Do you have any secrets that you can tell me about how you, you fly around? Or shall we torture him by putting him in the fire? No, we won't do that. The real Draymond, which is Bruce Willis, my bust at that door. Wow, I made a really big mess. So I hope you enjoyed this. This is the uh, midnight snack run that has no real purpose other than just to spend some time together, you know? That's what we do. Um, all right, so, all right, let's, let's, let's go into the tent, all right? A little change of scenery. We'll bring this. So, yeah, welcome. I know this is something that's gonna spill here. This is a pretty nifty light. I'm just gonna move it. A lot of these new tents, did you see this? Oh, ho, 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 ho. they have these hooks up here that you can you can dangle lights on. That's pretty ingenious. This one has a little ventilator. Uh, there, when I put the rain cover on, it gets really, really hot in here. So it's nice when you do indoor camping, you don't have to put the, the rain cover on. No, I'm not gonna tell you a story. I'll tell you even a scarier story. So can I? said that I can't tell scary stories. And I was gonna tell you the one about uh, uh, Toide no Hana. Do you know that one? Look it up, because I'm not gonna tell it to you because she was really angry. I told her that I was gonna tell you guys the uh, Toide no Hana story and she, she got really, really angry. All right, PMX says no. So that means no to telling the story. Make a long story short. Do you know that story about Bloody Mary? You know that one? We say it three times. They have one in Japan, except the girls in the toilet. Just chew on that for a while. It's scary. Kiki Miyazaki writes in here, Okapi in the tent. Please change the background next camping. Maybe magnificent views at the top of Mount Fuji. I, I, you know what? I'm hesitant to do that, Kiki, because we did try that on the second one, and the live stream was banned by YouTube because I don't know if, if it was the noise or the, the image from the, the fire, it started, it, it literally just cut off and the video was banned and I was afraid of getting a copyright strike. So basically I've been using this, but I will try to find, uh, I'll try to do an afternoon live uh, camp, maybe, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll change it up. Thanks Kiki, I appreciate that. I, 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 should, I should try to keep it original. I know Kiki, it's crazy. Like literally, the, those that were watching, they, we were just like thrown off of the live stream and I don't know why. I contacted YouTube and they don't even know why. They're like, we don't know what happened. So, <sighs> just a computer just said, we don't like only in Japan, go. Like, why is this kid doing a live stream every day? It's because I'm in self-isolation. Better, Kiki? Does that make you happy? Right, Kiki likes, Kiki likes hookah pink. Yeah. Um, so, so in the month of May, and it is actually in Japan right now, it is May. How you doing, everybody? I'm gonna take some of your questions for the next five minutes or so, but it is now the month of May, and uh, um, the weather is, this is the nicest time to visit Japan. The weather is absolutely beautiful. We're looking out our window. It's sunny, it's golden, it's golden week. It never rains in golden week. Well, very, very rarely. Go chill over here. And uh, we're hoping that the lockdown or the state of emergency ends on the 6th at the end of this. And then if it does, then we could go out, but I think that Kanai is gonna stay locked down and I might go out on an adventure if it ends, only if it ends. And if it doesn't, I'll think about it, I don't know. Um, because I, I still, as a creator, we have to make content, right? But I'm doing very, doing my best to try to respect the, the laws and the wishes of the leadership here, like we all should, because when I moved here and became a resident, I became a resident and, um, you can't do what you want. You have to do what the community tells you to do. 
Not really. No, you can do what you want to. All right. What questions do you have out here? If I don't like the question, I will flash 450 lumens at you to penalize you, all right? If your question stinks, you'll get 450 lumens. Look, there's, it's double light at you. It hurts. You don't want to... Are you a Japanese citizen now? That deserves... No, that's... No, I'm not. I don't want to be a Japanese citizen. My value to Japan is not being Japanese. Your best camping experience besides today, tonight, um, hitchhiking. I loved camping when I was hitchhiking. Um, set up the tent, go to sleep late, go to sleep early, wake up early, get back on the road. Uh, we used to camp in, in upstate New York at a place called Indian Lake in, in the Adirondacks. That was always, that was, that was kind of fun whenever we got the, t the tent out. I think, we, I think we rented a house. I don't remember. It was a while ago. Uh, in the UK, furloughed, furloughed until June 1st. Wow. Why don't you want to be a Japanese citizen? I'd have to give up my American citizenship. Why would I want to do that? Keep your distance while in train stations. I don't even go to train stations. I ride my bicycle everywhere. I haven't, I haven't ridden a train or a subway in seven weeks. That's crazy for Tokyo. We live in central Tokyo. Seven weeks, no subways, no train stations. Oh my. I turned, tuned in, and I thought he was outside for real. How do you know I'm not if you just tuned in? Oh, because it, it does look like a TV. It's an OLED. C9. Got it half price. Looks real, huh? You, d you thought it was for real, right? Yeah. Is, is that a light from Ghostbusters? This? That's an awful question. You deserve 450 lumens at you. Awful question. Don't even understand what that means. Are you getting microwave anytime soon? Uh, no, Kanai doesn't like the microwave life, so we've decided not to get a microwave. I haven't had a microwave in, in uh, seven years. No, 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 I found, no, okay, get this. So in Japan, people recycle stuff and they just throw it out. And I was walking out, minding my own business uh, in the trash area of my apartment complex. And lo and behold, in front of me was a microwave. So I had a sticker on it. I wasn't supposed to take it. I, I, I took it. It still worked. If it didn't work, I was going to put it back out. So I used it for about two years, cleaned it up, gave it a second life. Um, and then I had to buy a recycle sticker again and I recycled it when we moved out. I hardly ever used it. Not supposed to do that too. Don't don't take trash. Make it your own. One man's trash is another man's treasure. They said I took trash that day, <laughs> but I, I made it into something. I gave it a second life, and I feel I felt bad saying goodbye to that microwave. But I did extend its life by two years. Now, do people use Bitcoin in Japan? I believe so, but I, I think this Mount Gox thing. I don't know. Don't know what's happening with Bitcoin. Pete, you know who to ask? Peter. Peter is a, a cryptocurrency nut. He tries to get me to buy cryptocurrency. He said that these, um, I don't know, like everybody has a cryptocurrency. I'm not into that. It's like gambling to me. I don't know. I just prefer um, food and fun. And cryptocurrency is another world. How'd that come up? You deserve, this is for you because you asked a silly question. Cryptocurrency. What's your favorite song right now? Campfire songs. Right now, there's this really good royalty-free music that I've been listening to. I like that song. It's pretty good. I'm gonna have to switch sides because my arm's getting tired. Okay. Is it an LG TV, John? Yes, it's a C9. It's last year's model, I think. Kit, I couldn't afford this year's model. Or is it a C8? I don't know. What's your favorite song right now? Royalty free music? Can I snoring? Is she snoring? This campfire is so loud, actually. My neighbors probably are so confused. Like, is that really outside or is that coming from the apartment on downstairs? I'm probably freaking out the neighbors. Do you think that you could live in the US again? Right, it's in Ron? Um, I think I could, but I'll tell you this, okay, Ron? I moved um, 
between 2002 and 2003, I finished a backpacking trip and I was back in the United States and I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and I, I was back home for about three months. And I, I was at a crossroads and I didn't know if I wanted to stay or if I wanted to go. So I, I went back to Japan and I hitchhiked all of Japan from the very north in Wakanai in Hokkaido down to Kagoshima. This is 2003. And uh, I had to make a decision. And after that hitchhiking trip, the kindness of the people and the strangers was a side of Japan that I didn't ever see before. Because I was working uh, as an English school teacher teaching kids, I'd never really done anything like that. And when I saw how amazing the country was, I just said that I'll just try to stay here. And I set up a business a, a, a couple years later, set up my own business here, and I've been um, ever since then, I, I said that uh, I'll try to make a life here. If I can be helpful to Japan and, and make a contribution, then I probably will be able to stay here for a very long time. Um, if I had to go back to the United States, I probably could. I've had a lot of friends that went back home and, and uh, are doing fine. Uh, my friend Lauren and my friend Alan, they, they're all living in the New York area. They're not doing good right now, but they've all assimilated back to life and they're very happy. They have very they probably have better social lives in the United States than they, than we do here. Uh, social lives here are not as are not the same. But in in New York and and back home and in, in it's just different. It's it's friendlier in the U.S. I guess. Yeah, I I, I could probably live back there, but it's I could live anywhere. I, I'll be honest with you, I could probably live a pretty good life in India if I wanted to, or I could live a good life in in uh, Europe, or I could live a good life in New Zealand. It's be great. Uh, it's just the the way you think about it, and if you have an ability to make friends, and you you have a good job, you could probably live just about anywhere. It's a true story. Would you eat haggis? I have eaten haggis. I, I ate haggis in uh, um, Edinburgh and in Glasgow. That was in uh, 1998. And it was really good. Um, it was a little pricey, though. It was a tourist place. Haggis was good. Umeboshi at the same time? Maybe not. D those are two completely different flavors. It would just explode your taste buds, Will. And thanks for the message earlier, Will. I appreciate that on Patreon. I'll, I'll still send it out to you. Is it hard to register a business in Japan? If you are thinking about doing it, there's a book from an organization called Jetro, J-E-T-R-O, uh, Japan Export uh, Trade Organization, I think it's called. And they have a book called um, Setting Up Enterprises or Setting Up Businesses in Japan. I don't know what, it, I, I got this book um, 15 years ago. And it just gives you literally step by step, if you follow the steps, you can establish a business here. But in order to get the visa, you have to have the proper visa too. So uh, I was able to um, learn how to do it and I just did it. And at the end of all the procedures, I was shocked. I went into Jetro and I talked with an, an older gentleman who was uh, ex-executive from Sony, all right? And he, he met with me twice to help me set up my business. It was the most amazing thing. And uh, yeah, after you set up a business, that's when the real work starts, actually. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think. Oh, boy, I'm still learning. There's a loon in the, there's a loon right behind me. Have you been to Romania? I live in Cluj-Napoca. I've been to Cluj-Napoca about six or seven times. Um, I went to Cluj-Napoca in Romania. Oh, we love Cluj. Uh, La Cluj. Um, so I have, I have really good friends there that I met when I backpacked. The only nationality in 2000 and, uh, 19, 1997 that could go to Cluj, Nepo, uh, can go to Romania without a visa were Americans. Because George Bush, I, I, I believe, had given a speech. Or was it? No, Bill Clinton had given a speech in Romania and they had opened up the country to Americans after the speech or something. It was, it was kind of ridiculous. So I got on a train from Budapest and I took it um, through the night. We arrived at midnight, I think, in, in Cluj, Napoca. And I walked and I couldn't find a hotel because I was a backpacker. So I walked up the main street, and in 1997, the main street from Cluj-Napoca station to the center of the town in Romania was made of, uh, was, was a dirt road. And 
when I got off the train, there were, there were horses pulling. There were, there were guys riding horses. I thought it was like I was in the Wild West a hundred years ago. It was the most awesome thing I've ever seen. That's, I fell in love with Cluj-Napoca right away. It's Cluj-Napoca is the capital of Transylvania and Romania. And we walked really late at night. It was pretty safe um, to the center of town where there's a cathedral. And then I walked at the cathedral and I remember veering to the right and there was a travel agency that was still open. I don't think it was midnight. It must have been like 9 or 10 p.m. It was late. I just heard a sound. It was late. That's kind of scary. Door was open. That was scary. That's Blair Witch Project. I'm just gonna stay out of this tent. What fell? What was that? Anyways. I made friends with, oh, I spilled my beer. Oh, crap. Oh, no. Okapi, don't drink that. Okapi's already drank the beer. Oh, my God. Okay. I got to get the towel. Okapi did it. Oh, my gosh. This is awful. He's out. Oh, I'm never going to get, this tent's going to smell. Kanai's gonna be so angry. Oh, it's like all gone. She's gonna be so angry in the morning. I hope this doesn't get out of the carpet underneath here. I think it's waterproof. Everything's going wrong. Oh, it smells like a brewery in here. This live stream is doomed. I, I swear I heard something that fell not too far away. I don't think it was on the balcony. I, it had to have been at the front door. I couldn't believe I didn't lock the door. This is Tokyo. Probably everything's gonna be okay. I don't think Kanai would play jokes on me. I don't think she's, she's not the type of person. Uh, hey, Pozo's here. Um, on uh, Japan's Netflix, started watching the new Ghost in the Shell anime on Netflix. Uh, what are you guys watching on Netflix Prime? I was watching the Michael Jordan thing. That was just really cool. It's not scary. It's real life, though. It's a lot of good stuff here. New episodes of Billions is coming uh, as well. I don't know. Try not to watch TV. It's a lot of work to do. At least I won't admit it. The tent also wanted to drink a beer. <laughs> no, it did not. No, it did not. But I know who did. He's sleeping there. It's, I'm gonna have to clean out this tent tomorrow morning. It's all dried. It's all dried, though. All right, last question, because we're, we're going a full minute. He's not gone. He's just sleeping it off. It's not used to it, lightweight. All right, last question here. One minute silence for the lost drink. I do, I do, I, I will be back in Cluj. We, we wanted to go to the Black Sea and uh, I wanted to go this summer, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Um, I, oh, to finish the story, um, the, there was a travel agency that still had a light on. I knocked on the door, and uh, he came. Uh, he came out, uh, the guy, and he was shocked. And he started speaking Romanian. Bunujua, I think he said. Or I forget, 
forget what, what it is, good evening. And I, I said, I can't speak Romanian, man. And he goes, oh, English. He goes, English little. You know, he couldn't speak English. So he called his sister, and his sister spoke. So, and his sister's like, so what do you want? <laughs> and he's like, I, I don't know. I'm just not going to, I need to find a hotel. She goes, there's, it's very hard to find a hotel without reservation. You know, I say, yeah, I know, I know. So um, he said, you can stay in our family's um, cabin up on the hill uh, for $10 a night. And I said, that's, that's really cheap. So I did that. I gave him uh, $10 and I stayed there. And he says, in the next day, my sister will come and she'll meet you and take you around Cluj-Napoca, which is, the, again, the capital of Transylvania. This is all happening at night. I don't know anything, any Romanian. I have no friends there. And all of a sudden I was staying in um, an apartment on the hill in Transylvania. It was just so cool. Um, so he walked me up there. I guess they hadn't stayed in that house in a year because it was, it was a little bit dusty. Um, but the bed was comfortable. I remember going to sleep um, and there were wild dogs outside. Um, I guess they were howling. I, I can't remember, it was a while ago. It was a full moon. This was Halloween too, by the way. This was October 30th, 1997, just to put it in perspective, true story. Um, next day, uh, Gabriella, my friend Gabriella came and she took me around Cluj-Napoca and uh, uh, we made really good friends and guess where I stayed the next night? Um, in their house, <laughs> the next night. And uh, that was really fun because uh, all of a sudden I had a really good friend um, in Cluj-Napoca. So I kept in touch with her. She, it was really hard for people in Romania to, to travel in 1997. You couldn't get a visa anywhere. It was just for that Romanian passport was really wasn't valuable. And she always wanted to go to um, Egypt. So I went to Egypt and I sent her a book and I put Egyptian money in the book from Egypt. And it, it, I think that really freaked her out when it, it did arrive. Um, it was like one of those things where Indiana Jones' father sends the Holy Grail in like this wrapped up brown paper thing and it arrives with string around it. That's how I sent the book, just like that. It's pretty cool, from Egypt. And I went to her wedding um, in 2002, I believe. I had to buy a suit and everything, and I went to the wedding. And then Kanai and I went to go see uh, Gabriella. Do you want to see a picture? Here we can see a picture. Oh, hold on. It's a true story. Don't, who doesn't believe me? Kiki, are you laughing because you don't believe me? It's a true story. And then I went back. We went back in 20, 2017. Um, and, uh, yeah, we'd, we'd all gotten older. I hadn't seen them in, in, uh, like t over 12 years or something like that. It's a really long time, but, uh, super, super happy. Um, and we spent, we spent, um, three day, three nights in Cluj-Napoca, uh, two year, three years ago, um, backpacking in Europe. That was awesome. Uh, we went to the salt mines. Uh, Romania, Cluj Napoca has these salt mines that were pretty cool. I can't find the picture. I don't want to waste your time. Yeah, I've had some pretty good adventures. I'll tell you about the one where the Bulgarian uh, mafia robbed me of money and I couldn't pay for the visa when I got to Turkey. And uh, the official who let me in the country anyway I had to convince him. It's a good story. Hard one. Sofia was a tough town, man. 1997, Sofia, Bulgaria. Not the hub of tourism. Um, all right, this has nothing to do with Japan. What are you guys still doing here? John, where is the first destination you will head when traveling is allowed again? Um, I don't know. Kanai really wants to go to Guam. And I wanted to go to the Philippines. And we wanted to go to an island and kind of relax. So might be that, but actually, I got a lot of work to do. I have to start editing videos again and, and making content, so that's probably what I'll end up doing. I'll probably spend a solid month just filming and making stories like crazy. Uh, I have a queue of, of ideas and stories and, and stuff that was canceled before this happened. I gotta go back and, and, and finish those commitments, and then maybe we're gonna take a trip to Guam. 
I want to go to America, but I, Guam is America, actually. It's a two-hour flight from here. I've never been to Guam, so I thought I would, that would be pretty cool to go. Yeah. Anybody been to Guam? I'd love to go to Guam. German Christmas. Uh, I know. Juan, it does, right? It's amazing. Four months ago, we were in Germany, and we didn't have a care in the world. We we're just in the Christmas market. It's crazy. Four months ago. And now look at look at where we are. It's insane. It's a quarter of a year ago. A third of a year ago. Yeah. Will you do a live stream with Jennifer in the future? Like how? We're in self isolation. Maybe I'll call her up or something. We'll do a we'll do a uh, uh, one of these um, uh, interviews. And interviews just like I did with Tabi Eats. Did you see the Tabi Eats interview today? We had so much fun. I, I love those guys. I hope we can get a chance to do another collaboration just like in the kitchen or something, just to do something something fun. Really, really good time with those guys. Yeah, maybe we'll do something with Jennifer like that. I don't know. Finish a bottle of wine together. That'd be dangerous. Um, I've been to Peru. The food is incredible. I, I went to Cusco and I went all around P Peru in 2003. That was a beautiful place. I flew in, so now you guys are taking me back to my trip. I flew in, um, I did an around the world ticket for $3,000 in 2002 and 2003. So I flew into Darwin from Bali. I went around um, to Cairns, um, to Sydney and I flew from Sydney to Auckland and I went around Auckland in the green bus uh, the Kiwi bus for a few days down the Taupo. And then I took a flight, um, the Land Chile flight from Auckland to Papayete, which is Tahiti, to Easter Island, and then to Santiago. And I spent uh, a good 10 days in Tahiti and I spent uh, 10 days on Easter Island. That was awesome, all right, as a backpacker. And in Bora Bora, when I, when I was in Bora Bora, I, I uh, camped for $20 a night across the street from a place that was $500 a night. Incredible. And during the day, some of us would go over to that hotel's bar and make trouble. That was Christmas 20, 2002. Christmas 2002. I was in Bora Bora. Um, that was, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, then Easter Island was incredible. Uh, Ten days there, hiking. I hiked around the entire Easter Island, and then eventually um, we made it to South America, and I spent three months backpacking South America, um, uh, Argentina, Chile, and then into Peru. And uh, we did the Inca Trail. I did the Inca Trail for four days. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It was hard work. I remember hard work. And then we took a bus from Cusco to Lima, the scariest bus ride I've ever had, because this bus, I was sitting on the side where you can look through, the, look out of the window, and the tire and the edge of the road, and there's no like fence or anything to protect you, going up and down mountains. The bus driver was this far from the edge of the mountains. I swear that bus could have just gone over at any time. You guys want scary stories? My travel stories will freak you out. Freak you out. The ones in Nepal, those bus drivers in Nepal were the same way right driving around the Himalayas. Like, where do these people get their licenses? In Bolivia, all right? In Bolivia, there's <coughs> what's considered to be the most dangerous road in the world in Bolivia. Um, there's, everybody dies on that road. And we rode it on a mountain bikes. We, we just wanted to go down into the jungles of Bolivia from the, from the, so we're riding our bikes down there. And at the start of the trail, all you see are empty alcohol bottles. People drink alcohol and they throw it on the side of the road. They down the entire bottle. It's gone, just empty bottles. And they go, people really love to drink. You know, what, why are there all these bottles here, empty bottles here? People are drinking the alcohol because they're scared to drive on that road where all the deaths take place. Just chomp on that for a bit. Scary. Because, you know, the they drink because they're scared of the death road, but it's the drinking 
that makes the death road. Crazy. It's a true story. True story. All right, guys, that's all I got. I none of these stories are from Japan. It's like world stories. It's world stories. I haven't been to Monaco, though. I, mean, I'm, I gotta wait until I'm rich enough to have a race car. Drive around there. Drive around there. All right, it's campfire stories here. I'll, I'll have some more. Maybe we'll do some more campfire stories. We'll get Kanai stories out. I've been to Singapore like a dozen times, man. I, we didn't meet up there. Go back in, in Only in Japan Go and take a look at the Singapore meetup. It's the greatest meetup in the history of meetups. We had 100 people. It's crazy. Love Singapore. Love Singapore. All right, guys. Um, thanks so much for stay, staying with me for um, like 70 minutes now. It's insane. You guys are crazy. Love that. All right. Have fun. Stay, stay safe. Have fun. Do what you got to do to entertain yourself. Just don't watch Netflix all day. If, if it requires you ordering a cheap tent and setting up in your living room, do that. Because any little changes in your daily life, routine, make life awesome. All right? This makes no sense to, to the practical-minded people are going, you're an idiot. This makes no sense. And the rest of you are digging this. I know. Have a good day. Have a good night. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a live stream tomorrow, but maybe. Uh, Kanai and I have some really good ideas. Um, so we'll get to work. And you too. Bye-bye, everybody. Sleep tight. Just don't sleep in the beer like Okapi. He's up again. He's licking the tent. Lick it dry. Thanks, Okapi. Good night. Oh, yes, I mean, aside.